piling the pressure on Britain's National Health Service. Some ambulances are now having to wait hours outside of hospitals. Martin Berry is a paramedic with the London Ambulance Service. He says the worst is still to come. He joins me now. Thanks, Martin Berry, for joining us. I know you're very busy and you are working extra shifts as a paramedic on top of your teaching job. Um, how, I, I've been seeing and reading articles and, and reading social media posts from paramedics about how long wait times are outside of some London hospitals. What, what, what has been your experience in ambulances? It has been particularly tough. Um, I've got a number of years uh, attached to my career, of all of which I'm very proud of. Um, but the challenges that we are facing at the moment are particularly extraordinary. Um, I think in healthcare, widely, we're sometimes guilty of uh, jumping on and saying crisis whenever there may be a challenge ahead. But I think under these circumstances, this is truly unprecedented. The um, pressure being put on the entire system and the system being a collection of outstanding individuals trying to do their best and the right thing by their patients is really higher than anything we've ever seen before. And it just seems to be continuing. And we are worried that we're going to see some even greater challenges and more numbers and unfortunately more deaths over the next few weeks before we start seeing any sort of improvement. Well, I, because I've been reading reports of some ambulances waiting six hours, sometimes eight hours outside of hospitals with patients having to be treated inside the vehicles. Is that correct? That is true. That's something we're seeing across the UK. And in the shifts that I've been undertaking over the last few days, there have been multiple patients where we haven't been able to immediately uh, hand the patient over into the receiving hospital units, where we've actually had to wait outside the department. And uh, staff and myself and my colleagues have been continuing to treat patients in the back of the ambulance. And obviously, that then impacts on the care of the individual that we're receiving at the at that time but also that means that ambulance is not available to respond to the next call that comes in yeah. and at times ambulance services are holding hundreds of calls waiting for a response and people are waiting hours for that ambulance response to then wait longer to get into the hospital and then potentially when they get to the hospital that precious intensive care bed may simply not be available. I can imagine. What about other medical emergencies? I mean, you have to still respond to heart attacks, strokes, broken bones, all of that, uh, all of those things. How is that impacting uh, those other emergency response needs uh, that, that people have? I think you're absolutely right to highlight these individuals. We have to remember that uh, the world continues to spin and individuals, unfortunately, are still having life-changing events such as heart attacks and strokes, as you've mentioned. Now, the real sort of story behind this is we've almost become somewhat blasé about the tragic numbers of individuals who have sadly lost their life to COVID. But that isn't the true extent of this global pandemic. It's having an immediate impact on other individuals who need access to that healthcare system. So the difference of an individual suffering a stroke, getting rapid treatment, being admitted to a specialist mm -hmm. care unit and then being discharged later down the line and returning to a normal life, that suddenly could be very different. And a person facing lifelong paralysis, bed bound and being fed for the rest of their mm -hmm. lives is very, very different. And we're not seeing those impacts of this pandemic. And it's important to raise those individuals that they are also victim of this horrific virus, even if they are not necessarily COVID positive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You were quoted as saying on my last shift, every patient bar one was suspected COVID. I mean, you're seeing a huge jump in cases in London. Not just London. I think it'd be unfair just to um, point out London. I think this is across the UK. Uh, obviously, in my experience in London, that mm -hmm. is absolutely true. And a significant proportion of patients were COVID positive or very likely to be COVID positive. Um, and of course, we have to remember that we ourselves are not bulletproof. We make every effort to make sure that we keep our patients safe, that we don't become super carriers of the virus and spread it around our areas of work. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also seeing large number of healthcare professionals 
professionals, be it paramedics, nurses, doctors, who are becoming victim of the virus as well, and then having to self-isolate or go off long-term sick. And that means that individual is not there to respond to the needs of our patients. So it really is tough. And uh, my message to all of your viewers, anyone who may listen to the message, is please take your personal responsibility seriously and uh, make sure that you keep your hands washed, you keep your masks on, and you keep people around you safe. Yeah, absolutely. Martin Berry, who's a spokesperson uh, for the uh, London College of Paramedics, who's a paramedic himself. Thank you so much for all the work you've been doing uh, during this very, very difficult time, especially uh, this year end uh, difficult period with the spike in numbers we've been seeing across the country and indeed around the world as well. So to all the medical workers, thank you so much.